basic set operations. The union of the sets A and B is the set of elements that are in A or B or both. We use a U-shaped symbol for union and we have A union B is equal to the set of X such that X is in A or X is in B. Here's a Venn diagram that allows us to visualize the union of sets A and B. Notice how everything is shaded in both the sets A and B in this Venn diagram. The intersection of A and B is the set of elements that are simultaneously in A and B. We use an upside down U-shaped symbol for the intersection. And we have the intersection of A and B is the set of X such that X is in A and X is in B. Here's a Venn diagram allowing us to visualize the intersection of A and B. Notice how the only part shaded is the part that's common to both A and B. The difference A minus B is the set of elements that are in A and not in B. We use this set minus symbol for the difference. So we have A minus B is the set of X such that X is in A and X is not in B. Here's a Venn diagram allowing us to visualize the set difference, A minus B. Notice how we shade the part of A that does not include B. The symmetric difference between A and B is the set of elements that are in A or B, but not both. We use this triangle or Greek letter delta for the symmetric difference. And we have the symmetric difference between A and B is A minus B union B minus A. Here's a Venn diagram that allows us to visualize the symmetric difference between A and B. Notice how we shade all of A and B except for the part that's common to both A and B. So another way to think of it is the part of A that does not include B together with the part of B that does not include A. Let's try an example. Let A be the set consisting of 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and B the set consisting of 3, 4, 5, and 6. Let's compute the union intersection, the two differences, and the symmetric difference between A and B. First, let's look at this Venn diagram that shows where all the elements are. So notice that 0, 1, and 2 are in A, but not in B. 3 and 4 are common to both A and B. And 5 and 6 are in B, but not in A. So A union B is everything, the set consisting of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. The intersection of A and B is the set consisting of 3 and 4. A minus B is the set consisting of 0, 1, and 2. B minus A is the set consisting of 5 and 6. The symmetric difference between A and B is the union of the previous two. It's 0, 1, and 2 union 5, 6, which is the set consisting of 0, 1, 2, 5, and 6. Let's try an exercise. Let capital A be the set of little a, little b, capital delta, lowercase delta, and capital B the set of lowercase b, c, lowercase delta, and lowercase gamma. Determine each of the following, the union of A and B, the intersection of A and B, and the symmetric difference between A and B. Now's a good time to pause the video, try this exercise yourself, and then resume the video to check your answers with mine. Here's a Venn diagram illustrating this situation. Notice we have little a and capital delta in capital A, but not in capital B. We have little b and lowercase delta common to both A and B. And we have lowercase c and gamma in capital B, but not in capital A. So A union B is the set of 
lowercase abc, capital delta, lowercase delta and gamma. The intersection of a and b is b and lowercase delta. And the symmetric difference between a and b is lowercase a capital delta union with c lowercase gamma. So that's ac capital delta lowercase gamma. Let's look at another example. Recall that double struck n is the set of 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. That's the set of natural numbers. And double struck z is the set dot, 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 negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, dot, dot, dot. That's the set of integers. Observe that in this case, n is a subset of z. Let's compute the union intersection, the differences, and the symmetric difference between n and z. Well, n union z is z. The intersection between n and z is n. n minus z is the empty set. z minus n is the set of dot, 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 negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, or the negative integers, which we denote by z with a minus superscript. The symmetric difference between n and z is the union of the previous two. It's the empty set union z minus, which is just z minus. Know that whenever a and b are sets, and b is a subset of a, then the union of a and b is just a, the intersection of A and B is just B, and B minus A is the empty set. Another example, let double struck E equal 2N equals 0, 2, 4, 6, dot, dot, dot. That's the even natural numbers. And let double struck O equal 2N plus 1 equal the set of 1, 3, 5, 7, dot, dot, dot. That's the set of odd natural numbers. Let's compute the union intersection, the two differences, and the symmetric difference between E and O. Well, E union O is the set of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, dot, dot, dot. That's just the set of natural numbers. The intersection of E and O is the empty set. They have nothing in common. E minus O is E. O minus E is O. And the symmetric difference between E and O is the union of the previous two, E union O, which is N. In general, we say that sets A and B are disjoint or mutually exclusive if the intersection of A and B is the empty set. Here's a Venn diagram illustrating disjoint sets A and B. Notice how they're not touching each other. For example, E equals 2N and O equals 2N plus 1 are disjoint, or the even natural numbers and the odd natural numbers have nothing in common, therefore they are disjoint or mutually exclusive. Let's try another exercise. Consider the sets A equals the set of A plus BI in C, that's the complex numbers, such that A and B are in Z, the integers, and B equals the set of A plus BI in the complex numbers such that A is not a rational number. Is A a subset of B? Is B a subset of A? Are A and B disjoint? Okay, now's a good time to pause the video, try this exercise yourself, and then resume the video to check your answers against mine. Is A a subset of B? No. For example, 1 plus 2i is in A because 1 and 2 are in Z, but 1 plus 2i is not in B because 1 is in Q. Is B a subset of A? No. For example, 0 0.10100100001 uh, dot 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 plus 3i is in B because 0 0.10100100001 dot 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 is not in Q. But that same element 
is not an A because 0.10100100 dot 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 is not in Z. Are A and B disjoint? Yes. To see this, suppose that A plus BI is in the intersection of A and B. Then A plus BI is in A, and so A is in Z. Since Z is a subset of Q, A is in Q. Also, A plus BI is in B, so A is not in Q. Since we cannot have both A in Q and A not in Q, we must have the intersection of A and B equal to the empty set. Let's look at some facts about set operations. Set operation fact one, A is a subset of A union B. Set operation fact two, the intersection of A and B is a subset of A. Set operation fact three, B is a subset of A if and only if the union of A and B is equal to A. Set operation fact four, B is a subset of A if and only if the intersection of A and B is equal to B. And set operation fact five, B is a subset of A if and only if B minus A is the empty set. Let's try another exercise. Show that each of the following statements is false by providing a counterexample. Now's a good time to once again pause the video, try these problems yourself, and then resume the video to check your answers against mine. Note that in this case, there are lots of correct choices for the sets A and B. So just because your choices don't agree with my choices, it doesn't mean that they're not also correct. Okay, so A union B is subset of A. Let's show that that is false by providing a counterexample. We'll let A be the set containing zero and B the set containing one. Then A union B is the set containing zero and one, which is not a subset of the set containing zero. So this shows that A union B is not a subset of A. A a subset of the intersection of A and B. Let's let A be the set consisting of zero and one and B the set consisting of one and two. Then the intersection of A and B is the set containing one. So in this case, we have A equals set zero one is not a subset of the set containing one. So A is not a subset of A intersect B. If B is a subset of A, then the union of A and B is equal to B. Let's let A be the set consisting of zero and one and B the set consisting of zero. Then A union B equals set zero one, which is not equal to the set containing zero. So we see that A union B is not equal to B in this case. If B is a subset of A, then A minus B is equal to the empty set. Let's let A be the set consisting of zero and one and B the set consisting of zero. So we have A minus B equals the set containing one, which is not the empty set. Unions, intersections, and set differences have many nice algebraic properties, such as the following. Commutativity. The union of A and B is equal to the union of B and A. We could see this pretty clearly by drawing a Venn diagram of A union B and noticing that it's the same Venn diagram for B union A. We also have that the intersection of A and B is equal to the intersection of B and A. And a Venn diagram, again, illustrates the commutativity nicely. Next, we have associativity. For the union, we have A union B unioned with C is equal to A union B union C. Here's a series of Venn diagrams that illustrate associativity. On the upper left, we took the union of A and B, and then following the arrow going down to the right, 
we see that when we take the union of that with C, we shade everything that's in A, B, or C. Similarly, starting on the upper right, for B union C, we shade everything in B and C, and then following the arrow down into the left, we get A union B union C by shading everything in A or everything in B union C. And we see that whichever path we take, we get the same thing. This illustrates the associativity. So we could actually write A union B union C without any parentheses, because no matter which way we group these, we always get the same thing. So this expression makes sense. We also have the intersection of A and B intersected with C is equal to A intersect B intersect C. So we have associativity for the intersection operation as well. You may want to draw a Venn diagram illustrating this situation, just like we did for the union. Distributivity. A intersect B union C is equal to A intersect B union A intersect C and a union B intersect C is equal to A union B intersect A union C. Once again, you may want to draw your own Venn diagrams illustrating these two distributive properties, as well as the rest of the properties I'm going to mention now. De Morgan's laws. C minus A union B is C minus A intersect C minus B. And C minus A intersect B is C minus A union C minus B. And finally, we have the idempotent laws, which say that A union A is equal to A, and A intersect A is equal to A.